Welcome back to the Katcha Outdoors podcast, where we talk about all things California, hunting, and outdoors. So today we're going to be talking about the California big game season application strategies and what the California big game scene kind of looks like, how to apply what how our system works and and the information you need to know about that. Yeah, and some of our some of our strategies that we use year over year that yeah, help make, us help us be successful. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so before we get started, I wanted to do a quick little plug. We have our um, our website has a bunch of merch on it that you need to probably go and buy. Um, it has uh, t-shirts and hats and sweaters and stuff. Uh, some cool stuff on there. We just dropped a new t-shirt. It's pretty cool. Hunt CA. Represent all of us California hunters. There's thousands and thousands of us out there. So um, go buy a t-shirt so they know you're a California hunter. Yeah, and your support goes <laughs> a long way in helping us keep all this stuff going. Obviously, we're not sponsored or anything. So we do it all in-house. Um, yeah, we appreciate it. Go check it out. We're going to have a limited run hat coming up pretty soon too. Yeah. It's going to be pretty cool. You guys are going to want one. Uh, we're going to be giving some of those away and there's also going to be, they're going to be for sale on the website. So um, yeah, get some merch. And Ca- catch outdoors.com slash shop. So that's important. Yep. There it is. Let's jump into it. All right. So probably the first place to start is uh, how do, how does California tags and applications, what kind of system is it? How does it work? So it's a preference point system. And what that means is if you, when you put in for a drawing only tag and you don't get drawn for that tag, you get a preference point. And every preference point you get increases your odds of drawing the tag the next year. And they also have a percentage, I believe it's 10%, a percentage of drawing only tags that are random. So every year you do have a possibility of drawing a random tag. So basically you've got uh, over-the-counter tags and then preferential point drawings. So preference points and OTC, that's kind of all. There's no bonus bonus point system in California. There's no special this or that. It's just preference points and OTC. And um, I mean, there's some like special military stuff, I think, and junior hunts and stuff, but it all kind of falls under the same category. It's just like mm-hmm. you're going to put in OTC or you're going to put in for points. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity in California. That's yeah. one of the one of the big bonus features of California is we have the third most um, huntable public land in the United States behind Alaska and Nevada. There's over 28 million, no, 38, 38, yeah, 38, 38 million. million acres of huntable land in California. That's more land than most states have. And that's total. A, yeah, it's an incredible amount of public land. And that's a good place to stop and talk about some of our strategies. So let's first talk about over the counter tags. Something unique in California is you get, uh, you can buy two deer tags every year and you don't see that very often. You see that like in your Southern States with white tail deer, you'll buy one hunting license and get, you can kill several deer with that. But in the West, it's not common. So you have a ton of opportunity in California and the way you can, you can work with the application system and the over the counter system and to maximize your uh, possibilities. But of that 38 million acres, at least probably half of it, maybe I would say half of your public land, your public huntable land, close to half of it is over the counter. Yeah. Like your X zones aren't that big. Um, Comparatively. Comparatively. Yeah. yeah. Like A zone is absolutely massive. B zones are huge. Uh, D zones are massive. And that's all over the counter tags. So what California lacks in deer population, they make up for in opportunity. So yep. agreed. Yeah. California, there's a lot of opportunity. You got to work for it though. I mean, mm-hmm. that's one of the things we've always talked about and always preached is that, you know, it's not going to come easy in California unless yeah. you're hunting a private ranch or something. And even then sometimes black tails are pretty, yeah, we've learned that they're pretty tough. <laughs> um, but you gotta, you gotta put the work in and, and scout, you know, so before we kind of launch into breaking down a little bit more in the points, something that we always stress is that because California has such a robust public land uh, region and the -the over-the-counter opportunities are so great in California, um, numerically speaking, we always stress to try to go find a really good over-the-counter spot, develop a spot. It may take you five years. It's not going to happen. The first season you go out, you're not going to land in the honey hole. 
Um, we did, but you might not. <laughs> It's uh, not common. We, yeah. we have several spots that we've worked on over the years and you, and you just continue to go back and figure a spot out until you know where all the deer are, how they use that area. If it's a migration area, you want to learn their migration corridors, learn where they're wintering, where they're summering. Just find out all the important stuff about that because OTC is going to be your, the majority of your hunting in California mm -hmm. by far. And so if you can develop a good OTC spot and use that as your year over year time investment, and then save up your points until you're, you know, five, six, seven, eight points, whatever you want to, you know, whatever unit your target zone you're targeting to hunt in. Um, and then you can cash in on that you know, glory hunt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's really important too, as far as developing your, your spots, the same can be said for the drawing only hunts, just because it's an X zone doesn't mean which X's are, if you're unfamiliar with California, X zones are drawing only zones as well as some of the D zones, but, um, yeah, you're still going to have to put the work in. You can go on the forums, the Hunter forums in California and guys are on there every year griping. Hey, I just burned 10 points, 12 points on X five, whatever. And I saw three forkies all week. Well, you still have to put the work in, yeah. especially here in California. You, yeah. It's, it's a highly impacted state. There's a lot of hunters, a lot of people out there. Yeah, Californians mostly window shop and it doesn't work well. <laughs> yeah for yeah. deer here you've got to get we have a term called the thick and nasty and that's where you find deer in california mostly blacktail but our mule deer strains are our normal mule deer strains too i mean they're just in the thick stuff they don't mm -hmm. act like mule deer in nevada where they're out in the big bowls running around yeah but that's another topic yeah we'll, we'll get to that in another podcast the how to hunt the terrain but um so let's jump back into how the points work and what units and zones are so um California's broke broken up into zones. Some people call them units or whatever, and it has zones. And these zones are classified by a number and a letter category. So you'll have B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. And there's A, B, C, D, and X. And X, yeah. Which is who knows why. X marks the spot. The X zones are actually most of them hunt really well. So yeah. that may be kind of, you know. Anyway, so th those are your general, your that's how the zones are broken up in California. And when you're going to go purchase a tag, you can, you know, put in for a preference point or put in for a, for a tag to draw a particular unit. If it's a draw unit, um, say you're going to want to hunt X2, right? So you're going to put in for X2 unit. Well, if you don't draw that unit, you can also put a second and third option. But if you don't draw that unit, regardless of whatever else happens, you get a preference point. So then even if you drew the second unit, say you wanted to hunt C1, and so you draw your C tag next, but you get that one, you still get your preference point because mm -hmm. your first option didn't get fulfilled. So that's kind of a cool feature in California. Mm -hmm. You can just put some outlandish shot at the moon unit in the beginning. And if you don't get, if you do get that, then great, you're going to have a hunt of a lifetime. If you don't, you still get your preference point and you get your second option, you mm -hmm. know? So it's, it's pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah. California, uh, you can, you can separate your zones into categories. You have, of course, your over the counter, so you know you can get that every year. You can get that over the counter tag every year until tags run out. Until yeah, until Which, tags as, run as out. As long as right. you buy the tag and over over the, most of the over the counter tags, as long as you buy them before the first week of seasons over, you're pretty much guaranteed a tag. Yeah, some of them sell out quicker than others, um, but generally by if you buy them by June second, the deadline to apply for tags, you're going to get your tag. So you have your over the counter, then you have what I would call categorizations of premium, not premium hunts, uh, draw only hunts. So category one are like your, the ultimate hunt, right? That's G, I think it's like G 37. It's the, it's the migration out of Yosemite. So you can hunt, it's this really exclusive hunt. It's extremely hard to draw and you can hunt bucks that are migrating out of Yosemite national park in, in winter time you're going to go and you have the possibility <laughs> the of the giants. Yeah. It, you have, you can shoot an absolute monster. So you have these G hunts and you have some of the X zones like X five B is a really popular one. Uh, that's like your category one, right? So, you know, you're going to have to save years and years of points, sometimes 15, 20 years of points to get those hunts, to have a good chance at them. Then you have like your category two was what, what I've called. This isn't, uh, this is just how I break it down. Category two, it would be like uh, maybe X one, um, X, some of the X sevens, like um, five to eight year hunt, you know? Yeah. And like, and, and then, you know, that's, you're probably not going to get the same quality of buck as you do out of that Yosemite, you know, migration, but 
you have a really good possibility. You could still score a great buck. It's a great hunt. And then you can move down the scale from there all the way down to, uh, the, I would say the bottom of that, it would be, you can draw this hunt with zero to one to two points. Like C zone is a good example, right? You can score a C zone hunt usually with no points or one point. Right. So it's not going to be the hunt like some of the G hunts or some of the X zone hunts, but it's still limited amount of tags. And just to be specific, G is not a, a zone or a right. unit. G is a hunt category in the fishing games database. Mm-hmm. So a G hunt is a specialty hunt. And what that designates is a particular hunt in a particular location, mm-hmm. sometimes within a small radius, several square miles or one portion of a unit or a whole unit um, at a certain time with a certain weapon. And those hunts you put in for, and it's a rifle hunt in November in this unit, and you have one week for that hunt. So that's a, the G hunt is a specialty hunt. It's a lot of like the J hunts, which are junior hunts. Um, and there's a lot of the same ca- category or classifications that break down like that. Yeah, that's a good point. We should probably pause here and talk about how hunt categorizations are broken down because it can get confusing because right. you have A zone and you have A tags. They're obviously very different. So you can go buy an A zone tag, which is over the counter, right? but you can apply for A hunts. A hunts, it's archery. So A is archery. You have A1 through 30 something or whatever it is. Yeah. And A, like for example, A1 is the C zone archery hunt. So on your, on your draw tags, they split the seasons, which we'll talk in a few minutes about um, how the seasons are for over the counter and the kind of opportunities you get, but they break down the seasons archery and general season and it's two separate tags so you have your a series tags a and a number one two three four whatever and then you have your general season which would be like your c tag or your x5 a tag or whatever Uh, and that's how it's differentiated so like i was talking about a minute ago going back to kind of your categorization of hunts and the ease of drawing these hunts you have these high level hunts that you know you're going to apply for a decade plus to get these hunts and then you can go down the scale from there. Um, so do your research. Um, Fish and Game puts out the statistics about the the statistics on draw odds and, and stuff like that. It's kind of a it's a massive spreadsheet on the website. It's kind of hard to read, but you can also get like Go Hunt has a great resource for determining draw odds. Right. So you can go take a look there. Go Hunt's the easiest way to do it. It really is. Membership they break it down fee and all that, but it's it's pretty easy. Mm-hmm. So. so all that to say, that's a, it's a long way of saying you, you need to create a strategy. You need to have like your draw ambitions. So set your sights on one or two or three drawing only hunts um, because it's a, it's a long investment. Like if you're going to invest 10 years on a, on a zone, you know you're not going to get any other drawing zones or drawing hunts between now and then. That's why I stress earlier pull together a really good solid mm-hmm. put a lot of work i mean if you're putting in for 10 years you should be hunting those over-the-counter spots putting a backpack on and finding the deer mm-hmm. um, in those over-the-counter spots to buy you that time and then by the time you get to that draw hunt you're gonna have excellent hunting mm-hmm. in an over-the-counter spot anyway like that we haven't drawn pulled our tags for several years or pulled our um, burned our preference points for several years mainly because our over-the-counter spots are so good mm-hmm. that we've scouted x zones and you know uh draw only units and we're like man our hunts are better than this on our over-the-counter backpack spots yeah so it's just not worth it for us to cash in all of our points until we find that one special spot yeah yeah it's hard to give up a good thing but yeah Yeah. basically what i was saying is just reiterating go hunt you know the public land and the over the -the over-the-counter tags find your spots Mm -hmm. while you're putting in your points waiting for that dream hunt yeah. So a really good strategy <clears throat> is you, you have your, your over the counter spots that you've, you work on year over year, you develop those spots, you find where the, how the deer move and all that stuff. And then that's, that's your go-to, right? So what you can do is you apply every year, you apply your first choice in tag. Your first tag has to be your application tag. So you're going to put your, let's say you're going after X2. You're going to put X2 as your choice one. And then for your choice two, you can put um, like one of those low level draw tags like C zone, for example, you can put that as your second choice. And then you can put um, like an, an AO tag or an archery tag or 
uh, just a regular over-the-counter tag as your third choice. If you don't draw the first two, you're still going to get your preference point, but you also still get your tag. Then you can still go buy your second deer tag, which is your, which it, it would have to be an over-the-counter tag. So it allows you to have two deer tags every year while building points and working towards that dream hunt that you want on that specific zone. Yeah, so California um, is great for the reason that you get a long hunting season, um, <clears throat> depending on how you break down your season and what tags you have. So, for example, A zone season, the archery season in A zone starts in July, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but it gives you an opportunity to go out there, burn some calories, and chase after deer. And just burn in general because right. it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> burn some calories and burn the soles of your feet off. And, um, but you get to go hunt, and it's fun, and you can find some good spots in A-Zone if you look really hard. And there's a lot of public land, or there's a lot of private land as well that you can probably gain access to if you talk to the right people. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, you, so after that, m most of the seasons in California, in Northern California anyway... The um, archery season starts in August, so then you, and you know, then the in August A zones rifle season starts, and then, and then you go all the way through until, uh, like beginning of November, with the D zones. A lot of the uh, D three through five D zones, their rifle season will run into November. So you could you could buy an A zone tag, and you could buy a D three through five tag, for example. Start hunting. I think it's the second or third Saturday in July. And be hunting all the way with a couple gaps, uh, one week gaps in between, all the way until the first Sunday of November. Yeah. That's a long time. And I know some of the southern units like D13 and stuff. Our last podcast we had uh, David with us. Mm. And he was saying that their season is similar. They have a really long season on there too. And they can shoot does on their tag. That's so crazy. If, if you want yeah. a doe hunt in California, Southern California is the place to do it. The only place I'm aware of unless you're a junior or you get a special hunt. There's a, there's a few special hunts, yeah. but it's hard to get those. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if, if you archery hunt and rifle hunt, you, there's a ton of opportunity. Uh, I think I thought a lot about this and Ben and I love to theorize <laughs> everything. So, uh, my theory on why California has gotten such a bad rap in the hunting community as a destination for hunters is across the board. I would say the success rate, if you put every hunt and every zone together, drawing over the counter, all of it your success rate would be below 15%. So that would, and I can't back that up with stats. Um, I'd have to do the math, but speculation. I'm, it's um, educated speculation. So that means 85 plus, 85 plus people that are going out in the field out of 100, 85 plus out of 100 are going home empty handed every year. And a lot of them year after year after year. What's that yeah. saying? 1% of the hunters get so 90 many. 90% kill 90% of the animals. Yeah, yeah and that true. holds true. It, it really is true. Especially in California because of the, the pressure from hunters and all that stuff. So it gets a bad rap, but there's a ton of opportunity for those that are willing to put the work in. Yeah. So we yep. kind of. It, it's an opportunity state. And, and mm -hmm. actually, we I was in a meeting with Fish and Game uh, end of last year. End of last year. And, um, something we were talking about in the, in the meeting, it was a group discussion and oh, the question was asked like what, you know, there's a lot of hunters that are frustrated with the deer numbers and whatever they said, well, we don't really focus on that. We focus on the fact that it's an opportunity state and, you know, people would rather have the opportunity from the data that they have. People would rather have the opportunity just to go in the field and have a chance to hunt rather than being guaranteed a quality hunt all the time, like if it was managed like Arizona or Nevada or somewhere. Um, which, you know, there's a lot of hardcore hunters that would not get along with that theory. And some say they say that just because there's, uh, you know, more dollars and more tags. But mm -hmm. that's a discussion for another day. Either way, there is a lot of opportunity in California. You just have to really dig in. Like you've got to dig in, whether you're hunting a draw unit or you're hunting over the counter, you've got to get back in there and you've got to get into the little holes and find, because the deer usually hold in tight areas, especially non-migratory deer and even migratory deer. They'll migrate from a one square mile spot here and they'll migrate all the way along 20 something, 30 miles, 50 miles, 80 miles, and they'll migrate and stay in a one square mile, it's one square mile area here. So you're not going to find them. And a lot of times it's within one canyon. These mm -hmm. deer will live in one canyon. So, you know, all that to say, there's a lot of opportunity, but you have to dig in and, um, you know, Keep getting your points, keep investing time in public land in over-the-counter hunting, 
and eventually you'll start working out kind of a system that works for you. It really comes down to how good of a hunter are you and how much work are you willing to put in? I'll give you an example. So first year we went out together, uh, we had found a spot online, never been there before. We got lucky. I'll just say it. We got lucky. You scouted it. Uh, we did have knowledge we're, backing we're up our choice. But <laughs> so we went to this spot and we put our camp in a dumb location. It was in a meadow in a canyon instead of on top. But anyways, so we're camped in this meadow, opening morning of rifle season. We climbed out of the meadow over a ridge. Like as the crow flies, it was half a mile, quarter mile, yeah, maybe. Four or 500 yards probably. And so we, from the top of that ridge, we climbed over the other side, set up shop, opening morning, watching this canyon. And I harvested the buck behind us right here. So we packed the buck back to camp. Um, we hung the meat up in a tree and stuff. And when we got back to camp, there was a guy sitting on a rock overlooking this meadow, this wide open meadow that we had camped in. Our tents were in it. With our tents Currently. in it. With his rifle watching this meadow. And I'm not putting him down or anything, but that's what separates the successful hunters from the unsuccessful hunters. If you do your research in a deer, you know that's the first place deer are going to vacate if they were ever even there in the first place. There was no sign of deer in that meadow, and we camped in it. We would know. One ridge over, we killed two bucks. The next day, Ben killed his buck from the same canyon, one ridge over, less than a half mile away. There were no meadows there. No meadows, <laughs> heavy cover, yep. the right feed choices. He was that close to being successful, and he didn't even know it. So that's just one story that proves the point. You have to put the work in, but you also need to build your knowledge base find out how they move, where they move, what cover do they like, what feed do they like based on where you're and hunting. We're going to be bringing you some of that knowledge base on this podcast. We will, so keep tuning in yep. and buy a t-shirt. And <laughs> it, it, Honestly, though, we, we will be getting into that in the future. Mm, definitely. Into what the, what the deer feed on in certain areas in the state and, and habits that they have that we've mm. found. And because every year, like, for example, this year we hunted in California all over-the-counter tags and um, between four hunters – hunting in one kind of rough area, I guess, one unit, one zone. Um, we killed three deer and three bears in one and a half hunts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got rained out. What would you say that hunting area was? A few square miles, huh? Yeah. If that. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, um, it's one of those deals you got to put, you got it, like I said, you got to dig in. Just, you know. You got to dig in. Yeah. The opportunities are definitely there for those that are willing to work for them. Um, but again, it's, it's an opportunity state. You're not going to be bumping tons of deer. I mean, we just got back from, well, not just in, in January, we got back from Arizona and it was the opposite in Arizona, the opposite of California. We saw tons of deer. We were hunting hundreds, for five days. Of deer. Yeah. We, yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of mule deer. It yep. was crazy. And stock opportunities every day. Closing the deal was extremely difficult. None of yep. us got it done. Nope. Um, Three experienced hunters <laughs> that have done a lot of stocks. Struck <laughs> we struck out every time. We stocked, I mean, what, between all of us, there was like 15 stocks or something. Yeah, yeah. every day we were stocking animals. Couldn't make it happen. Yeah. Go so, watch the video. Yeah, it was Heartbreak Hotel. But it was a blast because you're seeing so many animals. Yeah. That's not the case in California. Opposite. You're going to come to California and you're going to get... You're going to see a fraction of the animals, um, but you could have that opportunity if you put the work in. Uh, we'll talk about in other in other podcasts. We'll talk about tactics that work in California that maybe don't work in other states because of how it is here. Um, but that's another discussion. Yeah. Shifting gears a little bit, let's talk a little bit about the other opportunities in California. Um, since it is time to go buy your tags and apply for tags, one I want to jump in for one thing on the tag applications. Um, the a cool little hack you can use for getting a premium tag sooner is to use a different weapon method. So mm -hmm. if you if you use a different equipment, you can get a 10 year or 12 year unit in four or five years if you want to use archery equipment mm -hmm. or a muzzle loader. So keep that in mind if you're willing to use alternate equipment other than a rifle, you can get these premium tags a lot sooner. So just do your research and go go scout these places before you apply for the tag because a lot of these guys, like Clayton said, you'll see them on forums. And I've talked to several guys that struck out in premium units, took them 10, 12 years to get. 
and they didn't scout it before they got their tag. Then they got their tag and realized it's a migratory only unit and the migration was off or late from this year. And Dry what, year yeah. or whatever. And, and yeah. they just totally got screwed. Mm -hmm. So it you got to pay attention to the details. Go scout the place ahead of time before you plan on getting the tag. You know, and then they you know, talk to the biologists. That's a so. good point. Yeah. Yeah. Buy yourself a bow. Yeah. You have more opportunities. A lot more. Yeah. Um, so kind of shifting gears a little bit to other game opportunities outside of deer bears. There is a ton of bears in California and the, the cool part about bear season here, we don't have a spring season, but we have a really long fall season. It's really a fall and winter season, uh, cause it starts with, uh, it's congruent with, uh, most of your Northern California archery zones. So it'll start the third Saturday of September, I believe. And it runs concurrently with your deer zone, your, yeah, your deer hunts. So yeah. you have archery bear season while archery deer season is going on in, in uh, August to September. And then in September when rifle season starts, that's when your bear rifle season starts. Now you can't hunt the entire state. There's a specific map. It's most of the state, but not all of it. Yeah. So go to the fishing game website. Check out the map and you know where you're able to hunt. Basically for most of the state, I think except for a zone and, and a few others, mm -hmm. if you're hunting deer, take a bear tag Yeah, because whatever your equipment is that you're hunting deer with, you can also hunt bear with in that same place. Yeah. Um, and that's a really cool feature because that's basic. I mean, we've never gone on a bear only hunt in California. I did a couple times, but I struck out. Yeah. It, it's yeah. not, it's not something we've like gone and tried to do necessarily, but I mean, we kill bears every year mm -hmm. multiple bears every year while we're deer hunting and we now it's kind of become a tactic like we always take bear tags always buy a bear tag and we'll go out there and we'll go deer hunting and if we get to a spot and we're there's no deer or you know whatever it's not panning out how we wanted to we'll hit the fawn in distress call always keep one of those in your pocket mm -hmm. and they'll magically appear and i'm not even joking <laughs> you yeah. like they go watch our one of our recent videos from this last season uh, Omar and I were, were doing the same exact thing. We were literally walking an old abandoned logging road and we were looking for deer. It was like a last day, last chance kind of thing. And we finished out our spot. There were no deer. We couldn't find anything. So we're like, oh, let's just hit the, Omar hit the call right before we turn around and hike back to the truck. And a bear pops out 120 yards away and just comes in on a string. She was just napping in some brush. We didn't know she was there. She didn't know we were there. So it's a tactic you can use in California because there are so many bears. Like if you go out in the woods, <laughs> most places that you yeah. can deer hunt and below a distress call, most likely a bear is going to hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not joking. It's that, it's that overpopulated. Yeah. The bear population in California, I think Remy Warren just said on his podcast that California has some of the best bear hunting opportunities in the entire West. It, it really is incredible. We have tons of bears, too many bears. And our quota, the way it works is the season starts, like we said, in August, runs into December, late December, unless the quota is reached. The quota is 1,700 bears. At least it was last year. It, well, yeah, I don't know if they've changed it. It, it hasn't changed 17, in a while. 000, but. <laughs> um, we haven't hit that quota ever. And, and, and well, we haven't quit, hit that quota Recently. since yeah. since dog hunting was outlawed. Hunting with dogs, not dog hunting. So you can't you can't hunt with dogs here. You can't bait. It's um, free chase, which is fine. But we'd never hit that quota, and so more people need to buy more bear tags because we have tons of bears. And I'll give you an example. Opening morning of archery this year, John and I saw one buck, and we saw four bears in opening morning. And, and that's, that's when I killed abnormal. this one. No, yeah, that's we not. See, we see that all the time. We see tons of bears. So. If you're backpacking, especially bears are skittish when it comes to roads, you're not going to see a lot from the road, but if you're out backpacking away from roads and heavy, uh, f human traffic, yep. then you're going to see bears for sure. Yep, for sure. Um, so yeah, the next thing would be like your elk, the hard, yeah. the hard to get <laughs> elk, the elusive dream. Yeah. So California, um, you're not going to hunt elk. <laughs> Um, there are actually, there's a good growing herd of elk in California. I think the herd's up to close to 30,000 elk right now in California. And we are the only state that has all three species of elk. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got two of the elk, Roosevelt elk and Rocky Mountain elk. And we're the only state, I think only place in the world that has two of the elk actually, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if not, I know we're the only state in the United States that does. Um, I think and, you're right. Yeah. And they're amazing. They're incredible elk. That's, that's my bucket list. Elk. Yeah, very cool antlers. One day when I'm yeah. 65 years old, <laughs> I'll get out there and 
and shoot me a two of the elk. But, um, but yeah, the, the point, I mean, you're looking at 15 or 20 years minimum. You're lucky if you're getting one at 15 years at this mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Um, and, and other than that, I mean, I think you may, there's some private ranches you can hunt to the elk on, but you're going to pay like 10, $15,000 yeah, for a pretty it. steep fee. Yeah. yeah the thing <clears throat> you have to remember too, um, you, you're going to apply, you're going to build your points. It's going to take you a very long time following traditional methods. There's always the chance slim as it may be right. to, to hit that random draw. Cause I, th- I believe it's 10% of the tag allocation is random. Anybody can draw it. Zero points, 20 points, doesn't matter. So you could hit that random draw. Yep. It's very low odds, but That's hey. why when we, a strategy we use when we're putting in for, for hunts is always put in for that dream hunt. You know, I'm always going to put in for that bull elk wherever I want to go that I'm not telling you tag. Um, and then if I don't get it, I get the preference point. But there's no sense in just buying a preference point because then you never have the chance of being that random one tag or two mm-hmm. tags. And it's the same with pronghorn. We have antelope in California and you can hunt them and they're not quite as hard to get as elk, but they're difficult still. Um, we have, you know, bighorn rams, California rams. Um, so, I mean, you can, you can hunt all these species in California a long time from now. (laughs) Um, so they're there, they're here. They're just not in numbers or managed in a way where hunters really get much of an opportunity at them. Yeah. Yeah, we have um, pretty much with a bighorn sheep, it's a once in a lifetime. Oh, for you sure. You draw it once, and it might yeah. be once in yeah, a lifetime. Yeah, they may shut you down. I don't know for sure on that, but a lot of states do that with yeah, certain I'm not tags. Sure. Once you draw one, that's it. I know the moose is like that in some states. Yeah, but either way, that's that's it for sheep. Sheep are more impacted than elk. Uh, California has actually done a really good job of growing its elk herds. They were The tule elk were almost extinct in yeah, the early 1900s. There was like 40 individuals or something ridiculous. It was really low number. In the and marsh, soon marsh. So they've, uh, they've really done well at managing and growing, slowly growing the populations. So you might see more hunting opportunities in years to come, which would be cool. Yeah. Reverse point creep. Yeah, exactly. Um, so other than that, so we got bear, deer, elk, pronghorn, all that stuff out of the way. Basically we're down to pigs, right? Pigs so, and coyotes. Yeah. And there's no tag application strategy for either of those. You just Mm-mm. go buy one. Yeah. Coyotes, you don't need any kind of a tag. You just need your hunting license. Mm-hmm. pigs are what 20 something dollars a tag and i don't think there's a limit on how many you can buy as far as i know no they just you can keep buying them so uh, it's just hard to find them. it is hard to find on public land there's a lot of them on private land but they're very nomadic so that's another discussion pigs but they're yeah they destroy property and a lot of times fish and game will actually wipe them out because they destroy yeah you know wildlife Especially around public and, uh you know like state parks and stuff like that they're trapping them like crazy so yeah so you're not going to see a lot of them on public land, but there is opportunities and it could be a really fun hunt. Uh, but that's something you could do year round. And like I said, 28 bucks, I think yeah. for the tag, it's pretty cheap. Well, so we've talked about, you know, general guidelines and how the whole thing works with applying here. So what are we doing this year? Let's talk about it. We're not hunting in California. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so yeah, we've got some exciting stuff coming up this year. We are hunting in California probably a couple times. We're going to kick it off in a zone most likely. We're not married to it. Yeah. I said I would never hunt in a yeah. particular region of northern A zone again because so it was, did I, it's but... been miserable for us. But uh, we may end up doing it. So um, we'll there's, see. There's always that draw of like, I know I can go out and hunt if I have the right tag. Yeah. And I don't want to sit at home when I could be hunting. Right. So there's always that that component. Yeah. But... And and I think shooting a a black tail in A zone in July public land on public land is probably as hard of a hunt as you'll find anywhere in the world. And Did that you say sounds with like, archery? That's, yeah. Yeah. That sounds exaggerative, but honestly, no, I really 100%. think if you've ever hunted a zone in the summer for blacktail bucks on public land, it's, it's bananas. Cause you, there's a lot of ranches in a zone Yeah, that obviously it's a lot easier than public land, yeah. public land can, hunting. If you can make it happen on public land with archery equipment in a zone, you, my hat's off to you Yeah, because that's a hard hunt. We have yet to get it done. Yeah. We haven't spent a lot of time hunting a zone, honestly though, comparatively. And we've had a, we've had our stocks. We, we, yeah, we, we've stocked them. So yeah, a few opportunities. Yeah. Um, just it's extremely difficult. Bo- both Clayton and I literally have almost died in the field of heat exhaustion mm-hmm. in a zone hunting. It's, yeah. it's been intense. That's the one place if it's in the hot part of a zone, it's the one place where I would advise against backpack hunting. Yeah. It's not safe, really. It's really not. It gets so incredibly hot. 
Yeah, we've we've hunted oh, 100 plus degree days multiple in a row out there, mm-hmm. and it's it's brutal. Yeah, it's I over a hundred by can't 10 a.m. Carry enough water for it to be worth it. Yeah, and you lose so much water. So I mean, we're up, we're off topic, but I mean, it's, it's right. yeah. So we may or may not <laughs> we may or may not get out to a zone. We might have just talked ourselves out of it, but that's Sounds kind like of fun, right? <laughs> it's kind of always been in the back of my mind. It's something I've never conquered, and I want to yeah. conquer it. So yeah, I, I will know. mount that buck. Oh, I don't care if it's got, <laughs> that's a spike by fork that's going on the wall. Oh man! So then, what's our next hunt after that? So we're doing something tentatively. We're doing something we've never done, and uh, horse hunting. We're not hunting horses. We're hunting with horses. <laughs> so yeah, we we hooked up with a buddy of ours who is a cowboy, legit cowboy, has horses. Used to do horse out horseback outfitting in Arizona. Recently moved here, and yeah. We're uh, trying to talk yep. him into starting a, an outfitter business here. So if he does, we may end up dropping his info in our yeah. hunt video so that you guys can hire him up because uh, you're going to see by the hunt film that we published that we haven't done yet. <laughs> we're slocking them, boys. Yeah, we're really excited about it. It feels like cheat codes a yeah. little bit. Um, we've just we're going to a particular area that we've done a lot of backpack hunting in. And we have ground it out there. Mm-hmm. We've multiple, multiple hundred pound packs coming out of there for miles and miles out of the deepest, nastiest ravines and holes in the place. Mm-hmm. And being on horseback going in there is just going to be like riding a parade. I mean, yeah, it's going to yeah. be awesome. I'm excited. Yeah. So we're excited about that. That's going to be our archery California hunt. And then we're going to Colorado tentatively uh we're still don't know if we've drawn yet but we got a pretty high odd of drawing so Mm -hmm. um pretty high chance of drawing so if we do that then yeah it's going to be colorado uh, like central eastern colorado um uh, archery archery elk elk. yeah yeah and the rut rut fest bugle fest we haven't we haven't elk hunted in a couple years and we've been itching to get out there so dying to kill an elk so yeah, and we, we're gonna try if we can to pull off a, a rifle hunt too. Um, if we don't get it done during archery here in California, mm-hmm. uh, we'll see how that goes. Play that by ear. Well, but we're gonna get it done during archery. That's it's the just hope. a matter of if we want to go rifle hunting afterward. Yeah. So all that to say, we're not uh, putting in for one of those uh, one of those drawing only tags that we know we can draw with our points. We're gonna do something crazy right. that we know we're not gonna draw. Um, and then just go back to our trusted over the counter spots for the year and then maybe go back to Arizona in December because we, with the tag we bought, you can actually hunt all three seasons, which Mm -hmm. they have January, I think August and then December on the same tag. So we might go back and see if we can get it done. It's a cool state. They have a really cool management in Arizona. Yeah. It's it's incredible. Really cool. That was a lot of fun. And it was a fun hunt. We had a blast and, and I, I would love to go back. I mean, it's, it's. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind going back for sure. So we're probably going to go maybe a different area. I wouldn't mind going somewhere closer to the border of yeah. California. Maybe hit some pine terrain. We love yeah. the pines. So. Yeah. so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, our year is going to be really fun. And I hope you guys got some cool hunts planned. Um, if you do, let us know about them. Yeah. Where are you going? What are you doing? We want to know. Yeah. Also, we want to know how you like the podcast. Um, we're enjoying putting it together. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you know, let us know if you guys have any recommendations for topics that you want to hear. Um, I know we're probably going to try to do one on predation, California uh, hunting pressure predation. Um, a lot of tips and tactics yeah, and so, terrain and yep. yeah. how to break down California hunting areas. Um, but yeah, let us know if there's a particular guest that you want to see on the podcast. You know, we'll, we'll call them up. Say, hey, the people want to see you. And we have some cool guests in the works too. Um, hopefully soon we'll coordinate our schedules and get them on. Uh, I think it'll be an exciting discussion. So, yeah. and, and again, um, we love your support. We appreciate it. Um, check us out our website, buy some shirts, buy some merch, www. rock the brand. Outdoors slash dot com slash shop shop. <laughs> I always forget the dot com. <laughs> and it's cool. All of our designs have a backstory. They're personal to us. It's not just something we, you know, slap together. It's a, they all tell a story about something we do, some slogan we have, or like the Hunt CA series is, yeah. you know, we want to promote bear hunting. So we have the Hunt CA with the with the bear and then the zones with California 
it's pretty unique. So yeah, and then we've got uh, the thick and nasty is one of my favorite. Mm-hmm. Is that still on there? Oh yeah, yeah. And and that's I mean basically if you're hunting California and you can remember one thing, take one thing from this podcast, and you want to try to find a deer, look in the thick and nasty stuff, mm-hmm. and that's where you're gonna find them. Find the thickest, nastiest hillside. Usually it's north facing, um, steep, rugged brush everywhere. You're gonna find blacktails in there. You and that's know. your preview for our tips and tactics uh, yeah. podcast. <laughs> and then buy the t-shirt. It'll make you 30% more successful. <laughs> <laughs> Results not guaranteed. Asterisk. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you all listening and watching. Um, we will keep this thing going and we'll see you on the next podcast.